Hi, welcome to the Lackawanna Cutoff, part 21E. The missing 21 miles, where in this segment we will be going between the Polenskill Viaduct to the Delaware River Viaduct. Hi, this is Chuck Walsh, and I'm president of the North Jersey Rail Commuter Association. And we're in the home stretch of our mini series on the missing, missing 21 miles between Port Morris and Slateford Junction. In this segment, we have only two and a half miles to go. I say only, uh, but it may be challenging at times. Uh, in fact, I know it will be challenging at times because I've already done this particular segment just to check on it to see because I'd heard different rumors about how bad it is uh, there, there will be there will be some issues which we'll get into in a moment uh, but in terms of what we will be going through what we will be seeing obviously the big ticket item is right here where we are right now on top of the I'll call it the Hainsburg viaduct the, the Polensko viaduct Polenskill is the river it's not the Poland's Kill River, it's the Poland's Kill. That's kill means river. Uh, the Poland's Kill Viaduct, uh, largest railroad bridge in the world when it was built, largest reinforced concrete structure in the world when it was built. Uh, 1,100 feet long, 115 feet from what would have been the, the height of the rail, about here or so, uh, all the way down to the river. It was completed in 1911. Uh, spans the, we'll call it the Poland Hill Valley. What's interesting is that you have these two viaducts, which are really quite close to each other, uh, as we'll see, because at that, the the other viaduct, the Delaware River Viaduct, which goes over the Delaware River, uh, is is at the the end point of our particular jaunt today. So what will we see? or what, at least what we pass, because with all the foliage, now we're full foliage. We've gone from 21A, where the, the, we're just seeing sprouts and that kind of thing, to we're full bloom right now. So a lot of things that might have been visible when, if we had done this, not in the beginning of June, but let's say in April, uh, now we're gonna be, it's gonna be difficult, if not possible, to see. But uh, nevertheless, it will give you an idea of what we are passing. Uh, where we are right now on the viaduct, we are above Station Road, where the New York, Susquehanna, and Western, and the Lehigh and New England railways uh, passed underneath. What's interesting is that th this our starting point here and our ending point are also places where the New York, Susquehanna, and Western passed under going in different directions. This way towards Columbia and around. It's two and a half miles by the cutoff. I'm gonna guess that back in the day via the New York, Susquehanna and Western because it meandered and went circuitously all the way into Columbia and around. It might have been almost twice that distance to get from here to there. Granted, of course, the, um, the those railroads were down below us, a hundred some odd feet below us uh, at this point. So what else? Well, of course, we'll cross the Polanskill itself. On the other side of the river, uh, and not too far, actually, we will cross over State Route 94, New Jersey State Route 94. And right after that, we will cross over the Lehigh, New England right-of-way that was never used. We've talked about this in previous episodes. The Lehigh, New England, which used this right-of-way underneath us with the Susquehanna used trackage rights, uh, was contemplating and actually had started building its own right of way somewhat parallel to this route, including going underneath the cutoff just beyond Route 94. And uh, that was never built. But the Lackawanna, during the time it was constructing the route, had to maintain a, a right of way. And in fact, now there is a, there's a tunnel underneath there which is part of what is called Tunnel Field. It's a, um, a recreational field for Knowlton Township, and the tunnel is, is used as a, a conduit between the two, a, a roadway 
between the two uh, parts of the field, which were on opposite sides of the cutoff. It would be impossible, basically, to get to if they didn't have that tunnel. Uh, and in fact, that tunnel is very wide, and the, the reason why is because once you get past, or literally almost really at the Lehigh New England undercrossing, is the start of Haynesburg siding, or siding is actually before tracks um, when it was built. But what's unusual, or actually in a sense unique, on the cutoff is that for some reason, if you look at the maps, the Haynesburg siding area is even wider than would be for other sidings. Why that is, I don't really know, but it is extremely wide and don't know with, with this uh, GoPro in my head whether because of the wide angle lens you'll get that sense, but uh, when you visit it, 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 it's extremely wide. I don't know what else to say about it. and um, So it's very unusual and once again unique on the cutoff in terms of the width of the, the actual right of way where the, the tracks would have been. After that, when that ends, just shortly a few hundred yards west of that point, is the one overhead bridge on this segment, and that will be for Stark Road. And then we'll continue on, and we get to the Delaware River Viaduct. Simpson Road, uh, which is where it was the old New York Susquehanna and Western uh, right of way, which went up to the water gap, which is, you can see behind me. and. Uh, that, that particular route was abandoned back in, uh, in 1940 or so. So, uh, that, that pretty much gives you a, an overview of what we can anticipate. Uh, there's been, once again, this has been the, the usual litany of rain in, in this, this springtime of 2019. So as a result, can't really say exactly what we'll encounter in terms of uh, water. Um, when I went over uh, a month or so ago, it was after rain, and I was surprisingly it wasn't wasn't much in the way of water. So maybe we'll be lucky in that respect. There was some mud, and uh, but you'll see with the I call them the detours. They were really the biggest issue uh, because of the uh, the fallen trees on this vast area, which is the, the um, you know the, uh, basically a mile in length, more or less, the Haynesburg siding area. That's really the area that I think. So uh, I think I'll have to walk across here. I think that would be the wisest thing to do. And uh, then we'll I'll start on my jaunt and see how we do the rest of the way. And uh, I'll give you maybe a little bit of a narrative as we go along. But uh, uh, one last thing, as it, I always like to point out points of interest, it's a, a little bit, well, just a little bit overgrown. Uh, this is a refuge bay on the, uh, on the Haynesburg Viaduct. Uh, this is a place where when there were two tracks, and workers might have been up here. If a train came along, they'd run in there, and they, that would be their refuge, if you will, for the, uh, until the train went past. Um, and I think there are multiple refuge. Well, there's one right over here, as a matter of fact, right across as well. Uh, but anyway, that's just a little bit of an FYI. So off I go. Uh, we'll see you at the Delaware River Viaduct in a little bit. We'll see you. Good morning. Good morning. Additional refuge bays. Bones kill. And 
Haynesburg, beyond, you can see a house there, and the top of what is now the Animal Mansion. Show you a photo of this scene back in the day. Another set of refuge bays. And another. And one last set before we leave the, the bridge. Looks like I might be able to finally get onto the bicycle and make better time than on foot. We'll see how far we can go. It might be okay. I haven't been on this section in a while. Um, might be okay until we get to Haynesburg Siding. I spoke too soon because we got water. We got, yeah. And these deep gullies which have plagued us in earlier sections.
one particularly bad one coming up here. This one here is a foot and a half. Once they get beyond like a foot, I find it's really kind of difficult to navigate. As I've mentioned before, previous episodes, there's a I have to make a judgment call as to how much time I'm going to waste getting on and off, or for that matter, falling, and versus uh, stubbornly continuing and trying to get through this. See a water hole coming up. Might be able to navigate this. There we go. Here, Route 94. weather station at home is um, compiled it was either somewhere between 18 and 19 inches of rain during the month of May this is northwest New Jersey the normal rainfall for May would be four or five inches So as you can imagine, uh, flooding has been an issue, just the inability for things to dry out. You can see here with ballast, in spite of all the rain, that this is dry. And if you have a, a bed of ballast, as we do to the left, still that's the, the old eastbound main, um, the ties would remain dry, which is a the whole purpose of having ballast. I mean, it also, of course, holds the ties in place so they don't move and you maintain the gauge between the, the tracks, which is critical. But um, part and parcel of that is maintaining a, a degree of, uh, of dryness to the extent that's possible, just so there's no sitting water. Being out in the weather, of course, they will uh, things will tend to get wet no matter what. Uh, but it's uh, you don't want things sitting in uh, in water, and that's that's where problems really start. You get freeze thaw and all that stuff. So um, so the everything considered with all the rain we've gotten things are actually at least in this section so far not that bad the the issue that we have here is unrelated to the weather per se it's more related just to the conditions of the right of way here you can see route 94 cars there um, come at an angle and so did the Lehigh New England Sort of a southwesterly direction if we're looking to the left. Southwest will be off to our left here. Um, as many um, undercrossings on the cutoff were not necessarily straight across at 90 degree angles, and this certainly was not. You can see the tunnel field, baseball field here. The uh, Lehigh, New England, I'll stop for a second. Um, the right-of-way, as where we are now, 
in the foreground you can see perhaps a top of a yellow fence well top of the fence for the baseball field and a scoreboard and then the at the edge of the infield start of the outfield the right-of-way would have been somewhere in between um, I'm thinking probably closer to the outfield or, or the end of the outfield the beginning of the infield somewhere in there but it's um, You'd have to be down below to actually line it up perfectly, but that's roughly where the uh, Leon New England went. And we'll cross over that part. Um, and the, I call it the connecting road for Tunnel Field. So ironically, that tunnel was repurposed. And once we get to that tunnel, almost immediately after, or we're even right there, we'll know that we're at the tunnel, even though we may not be able to see it very easily. Um, oh boy. Um, the right of way will open up or widen dramatically because of the Haynesburg siding sidings one track in each side on this end the uh, the eastbound siding was uh, longer as was the case I think in, in all the, the sidings um, where there would be an east and a westbound siding the westbound siding was tended to be shorter Um, I don't know that it was necessarily related to the length of the trains. Um, I, I, there may have been some rationale in terms of um, coming up the grade. Um, when they built the cutoff, there would have been much more coal and that kind of commodity coming eastbound so would the trains be longer eastbound but those cars eventually have to go westbound so I, I, I can't quite explain the rationale for there being um, different links not by a lot maybe a quarter mile or so we're still not quite to the point Haynesburg siding. I don't think, but I don't know, I'm carrying leaves with me. I guess I, in a way I'm contributing to the cleaning or clearing off of the, the right of way. All right, well, I can't really tell how much, how far I can go before I have to stop again. As I've mentioned in previous episodes, um, the condition of the right-of-way as we see it shouldn't discourage you in terms of thinking, well, how are they going to clear this? How are they going to put tracks back? Um, yeah, there'll be some work. Yeah, of course. It doesn't have to be cleared. Um, but let's not make something that is quite possible into something that we think is impossible. It's, it's not impossible, certainly. Um, and there are people who do this for a living. Not, th not necessarily clearing railroad rights away, but clearing 
uh, areas for uh, for various uses, like a roadway. And uh, in a sense, this is uh, it's a right of way. You know, just happens to, just happens to have tracks, or will have tracks on it, as opposed to uh, a macadam or blacktop. Okay, we are on Haynesburg side, and we passed the the tunnel field area. Yeah, and it is very wide. I mean, it's like uh, once I get past this, I'll do an estimate of how many tracks could have fit here. It's not that there were this many tracks here because there was only four. You know that. One, two, three, four, five, at least, I'm going to say could have fit here. Can't tell exactly what the, the boundaries are, because actually we're, at least on this side, on the, the north side or westbound side, very close to the surrounding terrain, so, but I, I, I would hazard a guess that five tracks could have easily fit here. Now, was there a plan ever to add tracks? That's an interesting question. Uh, Hainsburg siding, not really sure how much use it actually got. Um, it did get some use. We have photos of a, um, cars on Hainsburg. We have several photos of it, but. Uh, um, unclear as to you know, in later years I'm told that when they had cement cars um, from Portland that had problems and what they call bad order cars and you know, something hot box or something wrong with them that uh, they had to be taken out and repaired or maybe even scrapped for that matter and they'd, they'd leave them on one of these sidings, probably, I'm guessing, the, the eastbound to our left. I don't know that for a fact, but I believe that's the case. Wow. Okay, now we got mud here, which I think I'm going to be prudent and walk it through. Because I never can quite tell. Yeah, this looks the early lead up to this didn't look too bad, but this is, yeah. Well, it's kind of low-lying spots that are muddy, no standing water. Which is really quite remarkable. I got so much mud, it's grinding against my uh, tires. Yeah. But, maybe some of it will fall off because we have a, at least a little bit of a, a clear track here. I don't know. It's very, I'd say it's deceiving, but it's, you never really tell. Mud holes seem to appear out of nowhere. Um, this should be roughly a half a percent downgrade. Heading towards the, the water gap. This is a tangent, in other words, a straight track. Um, we will, as we near Stark Road, we will get a, um, a curve, a, a long curve. A percent, not a percent, a uh, degree and a half. Percent, I made that mistake in the last video. Uh, percent refers to grade degrees refer to um, curves although the def definition is similar it's a number of feet per hundred feet change the grade it's in um, elevation um, for a curve it's for 
change in direction left or right. Oh boy. Uh, wow. I, I can't. It's one of these things you don't know. If this were dry, it would be actually easy to navigate, but uh, it's a, a long sort of a, a long puddle. I don't know how else to characterize it. Uh, a dry, well, dry in the sense that there's no standing water, but wet in the sense that it's mud. Okay, I see. The, pile of ballast and I'm going to assume that we can't navigate over that. Well, we have this here too. Yeah. I don't think this would be passable. Okay. Maybe get some of that mud off, but we'll probably get more soon. That seems to be the case. I'm looking back and forth. Yeah, this is pretty wide here. Um, although, maybe because now we're on a fill, um, it might be that you have a better delineation of where the old right-of-way was and where the tracks might have been. So it looks like four tracks here. As would have been the case, it's it's not like the the area behind us, which looked like you could have fit at least five tracks in. Sometimes is what happens here is that even though I've gotten better at this, um, the um, the train can can trick you. And I know it sounds like I'm complaining, but I'm really describing the situation here. Um, I don't <laughs> like. Like uh, many years ago, I heard an excellent speaker, probably the best speaker I've ever heard. His name was Beck Weathers, talking about climbing Mount Everest. And uh, he did it and nearly died doing it. Now, I'm not making a comparison. This is, this is, uh, the cutoff is this, that, that bad, but um, he, he said that there were other peaks, smaller peaks that were more fun to travel on. And I would say, or to travel up, you know, to, to climb and less, far less dangerous. I'm not going to say this is dangerous, but I, in terms of uh, the, the pleasure of doing this, it would be pleasurable if he does you know, this ride, but uh, this is just the way it is. This uh, right away was not designed to be a bike trail, nor would we really want it to be. Um, but my point is that um, I'm not encouraging anyone to do this. Uh, the idea though here is that we get to see it, um, even though at different times here, it's um, the conditions are not really conducive to getting across it as fast as I would like to be doing it for your viewing pleasure. I understand that from the the viewer's perspective and uh, to some extent I try to edit some of that out as much as I can without making it look so disjointed as a video. I'm talking about previous episodes but this one will be the same way. That um, sort of like where you, we wouldn't want to like skip from the Hainsburg Viaduct directly to the Delaware River Viaduct but what would be the point? So we, there is a sense of 
of what it's like in between but uh, that I give you or I hope to give you um, uh, but please keep in mind that I am mindful of the fact that uh, the video sometimes can run a little bit longer than I, uh, I really would like uh, and that's really just a reflection of the fact that I just there's only so fast you can go on on two feet and do it safely too anyway you've heard enough about me griping about the conditions now one of the things I know from being on this previously is that there are a number of so-called detours because of um, trees falling over this extended area I want to say this is probably the worst one right here because it goes so far away from the, the right-of-way it is frustrating I mean it's uh, for me giving a presentation about the the cut off and say, well, oh my gosh, you know, look what they have to do and all this work that uh, has to be done. Well, I mean, realistically, yeah, there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of chainsaw activity that's going to be needed here. I don't know. Let's see, I don't know if the right of way here is clear enough for me to do this. I may even have to go back. Let's see. Oh, forget it. <laughs> nope, no chance. Okay, I was hoping against hope that we get back on the right of way, but I, I guess I should have uh, listened to myself, and this is the, think, once again, I think this is the worst of the so-called detours. You can see these fences, by the way. That's a, maybe some value being over here. When I lived in South Orange by the railroad, we had these they were concrete you have these posts you can see it over here and then these like uh, cross beams are supports and uh, there's very little wire that's left after a hundred and what is it now 108 years you can see some of the wire over here um, but this went on for literally oh, 28 miles on each side so 56 miles of that and somewhere I have written down where how much they were those posts were a piece like 10 cents or 15 cents or something like that um, you know thousands of those that were made and um, here's a telephone slash telegraph pole um, all those this is interesting all those um, posts were had to be manufactured like everything out of it on the cutoff uh, was made of reinforced concrete and so were those things um, well at least they were made of concrete and, and uh, stone I'm not sure if there was rebar to reinforce them but it was concrete let's let's put it that way and technically they weren't structures they were just a uh, fence but anyway um but interesting to see that some of that original stuff still survives we just passed yeah we're we're off the right of well we're when i say right of way I'm referring to technically the part where tracks were, but the right of way is much wider than that. In other words, the, the, the railroad would have owned swaths of land on each side of where the tracks were, sometimes because it was uh, a fill or cut. Um, it wasn't necessarily for the the thought that they would eventually expand the railroad although that could always happen but in other words add tracks but it was really for the um, 
when they acquired the land to build the, the right of way, they the right of way was more than a standard whatever it would be 22, 33, whatever number of feet wide, 66 feet. I don't know, um, but um, in some cases it's hundreds of feet wide. As we go through here, and I've mentioned this before in the previous episode. Uh, What's um, a trademark of the Lackawanna when they did these uh, sidings is they have these like walls. In this case, you can see they're like built up. But if they blindfold you and put you down someplace, you would know by that that you were inside of a, one of the sidings. You may not know which siding you were at. Maybe you'd have to have a really great familiarity with the off to do that but um, it's um, kind of unique to the sidings on the cutoff just that kind of construction you have some water trickling down here um, I guess I can attempt to get back on here actually the Greater menace now has become the bugs. Trees. I mean, it's a, several different things, but the. And now we're in a cut. Trying to run them as the bugs I'm talking about. It's pretty next to impossible if you're doing three, four miles an hour, I'm doing four now. gravity is on my side here. When I scouted this out, I'm going to say like a month ago or so, um, I came eastbound up the, the grade. So I'll tell you that that made quite a difference. Sometimes the jumping off here is because the way things are going, I'm headed right into a bush with stickers on them or, or whatever. Um, I'm looking out for poison ivy. I, that's another, <laughs> I have to say, constant menace. envy anyone who comes in here um, part of the cleanup crews that come in here and um, move all this stuff although I guess they're they used to dealing with all sorts of uh, nasty plants poison sumac poison ivy and such uh, they're ubiquitous There's a situation where I take a look ahead and yeah. I'll 
complete the sentence. It, it just this is all a series of judgment calls in terms of how to keep moving forward. Well, here's Stark Road. So the uh, the siding, Hainsburg siding, has ended. It ended just back a little ways. We're on a one and a half degree or one degree thirty seconds curve here, going to the right. If there were tracks, you'd be able to to tell about the, uh, the curve, but an empty right-of-way, it's um, especially for curves like around oh, less than two degrees, they're not that obvious. It's almost like you have to convince yourself that there actually is a curve here, but there is. That would have restricted trains, I believe, off the top of my head to 75, I believe, if memory serves. 75 miles an hour. One and a half to degree curve. Okay, so let's see how far we get. That it sounds like a, like a peacock. I'm not sure. This is not. Um, distinguishing animal calls is not my area of expertise. Okay, we got a lot of junk to navigate here, so I just don't really feel like falling into any of this. Huh? Guys, where the chainsaws have been around. I know at some point we do get a little bit of a, I won't say a breather, but we get it because that means I have to pedal. But I, um, there is a section here that actually is clear for a bit. I don't think we've hit it yet. And I'm sure I'm going to get fan mail saying, oh, no, that's really a, a green spotted, um, whatchamacallit. As I said, this is not. Uh, this is not my area of expertise. And that he or she was here when I came up, so I remember passing this here, um, hearing that same call over repeatedly, wondering if it was like, as in other places, saying, oh, there's this nitwit on a bicycle that's coming up the cutoff letting everybody in the neighborhood know about it. Uh, let's see here. Well. You get kicked off the pedals, and your 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 feet are spinning in midair <laughs> with no pedals to pedal. Okay, nice. Not a real deep cut, I'd say. 
deeper on the right hand side 25 30 feet on the right 20 25 yeah just slightly deeper on the the north side That's an exaggerated curve you see up ahead. It is curving in the same direction as the right of way is curving, but um, I think it's most likely curving around some something as opposed to being part of the actual train curve, as I'll call it. Oh boy, this is believe the things I find in my helmet after these rides. It's like I'm doing sampling for a horticulturist. Yep. Yeah, there's only... Do I kick it away to help other people? I don't know. Nah. I'll let the next person with an ATV or a chainsaw come along and fix that. Hmm. I know better. It looked like I'm actually going upgrade here a little bit. Um, that may be an optical illusion. I don't know. Um, this uh, large puddle is not an optical illusion. Yeah. At some point, we'll actually start to hear Route 80. Because Route 80 is coming up from, in a sense, from a different direction toward us, off to the left. Um, I wouldn't say that's paralleling us for a period, but it's um, generally was well, going to the same spot because it crosses under the, the viaduct. False start. It crosses under the viaduct. Um, right where we'll be doing our closeout for this segment. said we're getting into the home stretch um, in terms of distance certainly because uh, well the east section is um, which is interesting let's see well the east section is uh, two and a half miles the F, the final section, 21F, is uh, just about a mile. So we're as the crow flies here getting fairly close to Pennsylvania, to the Delaware River, to the end of our mini-series. But we still have our share of mud holes to cross. Hmm. Oh, 
Yeah, we have somebody coming behind us. Let's see if there's some place I can safely pull over here. Not really. Good, how are you? You okay? Yeah. Need me help? No. Yeah. No. Enjoying the day? Yeah, I'm uh, doing a video and uh, navigating all the uh, conditions here, but you know, it's, uh, I'm getting there. Okay. How are you doing, Bob? Good, how are you? Pretty good. Having, Having a fun. good day? Yeah, that's good. It's interesting that they think I'm in distress. It's not that bad. I mean, of course, I can't see what I look like. Maybe I do look like I'm in distress. Like somebody, <laughs> wow! <laughs> Hope somebody just didn't hit into that, or they, maybe they ripped off a branch. But that looks pretty, pretty nasty there. If they, if, uh, they didn't lower their head for the bridge. That's one thing on a motorized vehicle. It's one thing on a bicycle. You're not going that fast and kind of really. Can uh, prevent yourself from serious injury, but on a motorized vehicle, uh, that's a little different. You have to be absolutely sure you're clear of any fixed object. <laughs> um, you could really, I think, regret it. Oh boy. Nah. I don't think so. Okay. Definitely hearing Route 80. I could keep going, but it's nice thick ballast. The Lackawanna, your Lackawanna, even Conrail put down uh, lots of nice ballast, and uh, so the uh, the line was nicely ballasted, which was a good thing. It was operation. for a challenge now uh, do we attempt this or not nah. <laughs> that's the ballast it's the issue
Well, I promised a nice long uninterrupted jaunt. I don't know that I delivered that on this segment at all. It's quite possible some of those branches have come down in the meantime. I don't know. Um, the condition of the right of way can change overnight. Okay, we're on fill here. Like we'll get. Well, I see water just ahead as usual. But, uh, I don't know if I can navigate around that or not safely. Safely is the, the key word here. And with all the ballast on the opposite side here, I don't know that it's really worth it. A challenge doing so. This is the uh, Columbia Truck Stop that's to our left through the trees. The direction of sound of Route 80 now sounds like it's more or less in front of us. So, uh, we are getting pretty close. fill leading up to the Delaware River Viaduct. Here's Simpson Road. Also the former New York Susquehanna Western Railway right of way. As I mentioned that two and a half miles, actually a little under two and a half miles to this spot. But probably twice that via the the Susquehanna's old railroad because the uh, cutoff basically cleared a path now uh, whereas the Susquehanna followed the the train uh, didn't spend the money of course they weren't going about to build a couple of viaducts like this here um, but, yeah, it goes to show you a little bit of money, or actually a lot of bit of money, uh, yeah, you can, in railroading terms, you can actually save yourself a lot. Route 80, Delaware River Viaduct. Coming up to the Delaware River, which is actually quite high. It's, uh, a 
rushing uh, river as opposed to one that's usually quite tranquil, at least later on in the year. You can see the rapids there. This is just west of exit 4 on uh, Interstate 80. You're about to see the Delaware, uh, Delaware Water Gap, Pennsylvania side. Uh, Mount Mincy is on the left side, would be the top of the elevation on the right would be Mount Tammany. And my videographer is waiting for me as we get to the approximate border between the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the state of New Jersey. Okay, here we are on the Delaware River Viaduct at the end of the 21E as an Edward segment where we went from the Hainsburg Viaduct to the Delaware River Viaduct. Um, we're roughly somewhere, to, well, I'd say the, the actual border between the states is maybe up a little bit here, but approximately at the very end of what was the Lackawanna Railroad of New Jersey, which was the corporate name of the New Jersey cutoff or the Lackawanna cutoff. As we enter into Pennsylvania, I guess technically that's part of the Lackawanna Railroad of New Jersey, but it was part of the Lackawanna cutoff or the New Jersey cutoff. But from a corporate perspective, it's not really clear how they handled it because it was a different state. Um, obviously, a key spot because once we enter over there now, uh, we're off of uh, uh, well, off of New Jersey, uh, but we're under the ownership of the land is under the ownership of the Pennsylvania Northeast Regional Railroad Authority, Larry Malski's organization. Uh, uh, whereas this is uh, at this point New Jersey DOT. So we only have another mile to go. It'll be a tough mile, uh, but. Uh, obviously very important. All, all of this is important. It's missing, so obviously putting it all together um, is the key to reactivating the entire Lackawanna cutoff. So, uh, that's the end of part 21E. Hope you look forward to our final part of the mini-series 21F on the Lackawanna cutoff.